Well, good evening, everyone. I'm glad to see you again this week, and we're going to talk about a few things today, as usual. <laughs> you that don't know me, I'm Brother Forey. I'm down here in the great state of Louisiana, the Cajun land, where we got really good flavored food. But we're not going to talk about that kind of food today. We're going to talk about one of my favorite scriptures, and one of my favorite scriptures comes out of the book of Acts, and it's in chapter 2, verse 38, where it said, Then Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That goes on to say, For the promises unto you and your children and them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And he went on to say with other, with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now we live in an untoward generation. We live in a time like no other time. We live in a time where people want special rights for their sins that they're committing. You know, it's just gotten way out of hand. It's gotten crazy. You know, I mean, e even the apostles, when they walked in their day and time, the things that they saw and the things they went through, when they talked about the Lord or said things in a certain way, people got angry. Anytime we're talking about Jesus, people are going to get angry, and there's some people that are going to accept him, but if they don't know Jesus, they don't want to hear about it. So anyway, what we're going to talk about today, you know, is uh, some truths, you know, and one of the things that they talked about in the Bible comes out of Acts chapter 7 and verse 51 so I'll start and and they were they were preaching to the people and they said ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in hearts uh, this was Stephen and ears ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did so do ye which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted you want to know which ones which ones have y'all not prosecute or persecuted it'd be a lot easier for us to just say who they didn't persecute and they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one they killed them just for talking about the just one of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers now these people are getting upset at him. he's calling them a bunch of, of murderers and betrayers and and he's, he's just trashing them pretty bad who have received the law by dispensation of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And I hope nobody ever jumps on you and does this. I don't believe a lot of people get out there and preach it the way they should anymore to the point that that people are going to get angry, they're going to sugarcoat it, and we just love you, and it's okay if you're this or that, and you know, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything to offend anybody right now, that kind of stuff. But anyway, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. They got on Stephen and bit him. They put their, just like that. I know, I look funny, I look silly, but they did. They put their fingers in their ears. They didn't even want to hear him anymore. He was freaking them out, man. But he was telling it like it was. But he, he, Stephen. He, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked steadfastly into heaven. He looked straight up into heaven. And that's where I want to go one day. That's what I'm working on. And saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Now, we know the right hand of God signifies power. So God, you know, when he talks about the right hand, he's talking about all power. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open. So Stephen was actually able to see the heavens open up. And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice. They stopped up their ears. They ran up on him with one accord. Now we're talking about a mob of people running up on one guy for what he said. They're so angry that he spoke these words. The words just cut them to the heart. And they cast him out of the city and they stoned him. They were so angry they started picking up stones and they stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. Now listen to that. There's a scripture right there you need to remember. And that's in chapter 7, Acts chapter 7, verse 7, uh, Acts, let's see, 7, 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. That's who they called upon and saying, 
Lord Jesus received my spirit. They were saying exactly. He knew who God was. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Now, somebody beating you into two inches of your death, stomping on you, biting you, gnashing you with their teeth, kicking you, stoning you. You know they're trying to kill you. You know they're going to succeed if they throw another stone. It's probably going to kill you. And he told them not. He said, Lord, don't lay this sin to their charge. You know, and when he had said this, I like what he said, or what the word says, he fell asleep. You know, that's it. You know, we sleep in Christ. The Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I believe that. I believe the body sleeps in the dust, and it'll be raised again one day. But wherever it is, God takes us exactly, and what he does with us, is, it's in his presence is what he says. Now, we don't know what we're going to be like yet. We don't exactly know exactly what our immortal bodies are going to be. But the Bible does say when we see him, not them, but him, one person, his name's Jesus Christ, and so we're going to be like him. So all I know is I'm going to be just like Jesus. I strive to be like him as I walk every day. I try to let my light shine. All I want to do is see people saved. I actually believe in faith healing. I believe in having a faith of a mustard seed. I believe that faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the, uh, the evidence of things not yet seen. I believe it has to be the faith as of a little child. You just got to get out there and believe, just like a child. I tell a child, my grandchildren, something. You know what? Paul Paul said it. It's so, man. You can't convince them anything different. Well, if Jesus said it, you're not going to convince me of anything different. I'm going to tell you right now, if Jesus said it, it's true. It's in this word. I believe every single word of this scripture that we're looking at tonight. I love Jesus. I want to be just like him. I want to be Christ-like. I want my light to shine, even if they gnash me with teeth, kick me. I don't know how many people can get out here and go through the persecution that the, the apostles went through. But I, I, I know that at some point, if I get out here and I do anger people just for telling the truth, and they do decide to jump all over me, I believe God, at a certain time, he just says he's had enough. He won't put no more on us than we can bear. He'll take you, and it's just going to be a little sting to that death that they cause us. I mean, right now, everywhere around us, people are being being abused. They're being shot. Uh, in the news every day, young men get shot 11 times. Uh, women are abducted. They're, they're, they're sex trafficking everywhere. They're, it, it, the Bible tells us it's not going to get any better. He said it will wax worse and worse. So we're closing in closer and closer each day to the very end of all time. And the only thing that's going to straighten it up is when Jesus comes back and takes over and starts ruling this earth with an iron fist. That's the way it's going to be. And we're going to be able to come with him and be with him and help him rule. He promises us these things. But he's waiting on us right now. If you haven't been been into a, a condition of salvation, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ in your heart and, and you've never repented of your sins, or maybe you don't believe. Maybe you just don't believe or you don't know if it's true or not. I can help you with that. Send me a letter. I'll answer your questions the best way I can. You can send them letters to Hedges, to Highways, at gmail.com it'll be on this video they'll post it on it and uh just go or you can go into wilderness-ministry.com and there's a place there for prayer requests and there's like an area where you can read different things you know about different sermons and write-ups and things that people shared with me or things that i myself wrote you know i've got a lot of people contributing to this website and hopefully this website will grow it actually gets published for the first time tonight on this video the new site will be up and ready wilderness-ministry.com and we look forward to people leaving their comments send me stuff in the email i'll look it over if it's something that we can teach other people We'll put it on there. It'll stay on there, you know, and it'll be a, it's going to turn into one of the biggest archives, 
you know, on the internet, if it's possible, all about Jesus and, and baptism in Jesus' name and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost and uh, why, why that we speak in tongues when we uh, receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, th th I mean, just anything and everything will be on this website, but the biggest thing is about healings and miracles, and that's what we want to talk about. That's the, A lot of people need healing. A lot of people need a miracle in their life. A lot of people are hooked on drugs they can't get off of, so they say. But I'm a living proof that you can be healed in an instant. I used to smoke and drink and do things that I shouldn't do. And when I received the Holy Ghost, God delivered me from all that stuff instantly. I I couldn't have quit smoking on my own. I, I mean, I might have tried chewing some Nicoderm or something like that. I tried them different things before, and, you know, it didn't work. It just didn't work. But God was able to cleanse me. And when I had other problems, and you want to talk about some healings and miracles. I had a, some bad problems with my prostrate and some different things were going on, you know, and I was up going to the restroom every night and I went up to the VA and I had my checkup. I've been praying about this because if I'm going to teach miracle and healing, I need a little bit of this miracles and healings, my own self or, or, you know, so I asked God about, you know, healing my body. And I went and saw the doctor and, and she uh, did a checkup on me. And she, when she pulled me in there, she said, I got some good news. I Usually, I don't get good news like that. And I'm like, good news at a doctor's office? Really? You know, <laughs> I'm thinking, what could it be? You know, and she said, everybody sitting in that waiting room behind you right now would love to have your report. So I, now I'm getting a big grin on my face. What is she fixing to tell me? She said, you can come off your medicine. She said, you'll never die from prostate cancer. She said, there's nothing wrong. You're as healthy as you can be in that category. And she said, here's a bonus. She said, we do check your kidneys too. She said, you, and I'm over 60 years old. She said, I have the kidneys of a 20-year-old man. She said, it's amazing. And I said, thank you, Jesus. That's a prayer answer. That's a testimony right there. But anyway... I wanted to share that little bit with you this week. Until next week, we're going to talk about some other folks that we've seen healed, some other miracles, a little bit more about truth. But check out the book of Acts. I, I challenge you to read the book of Acts with an open mind. The very actions of the disciples, the gospels, all they were was the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, the acts are exactly how they acted out what Jesus told them to do. And that's what they did. In Romans, on through the rest of the book, their epistles, an epistle's a letter. And a letter to the church. So these people are already born again. You don't find salvation in a, the epistles. They're born again Christians. That's not where we were supposed to go to get this salvation. It's right there in the book of Acts. He said, Peter stood up with the other 11. And Matthew and Mary, the mother of Jesus, all these other people were there. And if there was any doubt in what Peter was saying, he said, what shall we do? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That was the time to time. Oh, wait a minute. Minute, brother what about go back there Matthew was sitting there he said well, what about 28 19 those are titles man that's a title of a name that was being baptized the boss to go out and baptize in the name singular n-a-m-e in the name of the father son holy ghost we have to find out what the name was in the bible it says there's only one name under heaven among men whereby we must be saved at the name of jesus we know every knee's gonna bow and we also know that whatever we do in word or indeed anything that I say that utters forth from my mouth a word, anything I physically do is a deed. So whatever you do in word or indeed do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. And one last thought, there's only one God. Even the, the people that, that recorded the Bible were one God. They didn't believe in those three gods. They believed in one God and his name was Jesus. You can find Jesus from Genesis to Revelation. It's in the Bible. You can, if you're, you can ask some of these people that believe in the devil and nobody else. They'll tell you the devils believe in one God, and they tremble too. They they understand that uh, even even when the man in the tombs was healed with legion of demons and stuff, they knew who he was. But anyway, 
until next week i'm gonna bid you a goodbye i love each and every one of you and i hope i have something really good for you that god gives me next week and we'll see you next week <music>